just because the J in JRPG stands for Japanese doesn't mean the game has to come from Japan. Here are five of the best JRPGs that were made outside of Japan. Just what is a JRPG? Most people would automatically think of it as a Japanese role-playing game, which insinuates that a JRPG has to be made in Japan. Personally, I don't agree. JRPG is a style of RPG, not necessarily where it was created. Brasden, a member of the JRPG Adventures Facebook group, had a perfect analogy. Playing a JRPG is like enjoying authentic sushi made by a skilled Japanese chef. While playing a JRPG-inspired game is like having a creative sushi roll at a fusion restaurant. It captures the essence, but with a different twist. With the rise of indie games, we are getting more and more developers outside of Japan using JRPG influences to create games. Does this mean that they aren't JRPGs? Not necessarily. Some of them feel just as much JRPG as games developed in the land of the rising sun. So for today's list, I'm going to name five great games that are similar in style to JRPGs, but were developed outside of Japan. Before we get started though, if you enjoy JRPGs and want to see more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and tell me what is your favorite JRPG that was made outside of Japan. With that being said, let's get into today's video. Time to start the discussion about five JRPGs that were not developed in Japan. Undertale, developed by Toby Fox and released in 2015 for, well, pretty much everything. Undertale was developed in a basement in New Hampshire by a single person named Toby Fox, with additional art done by Tammy Chang. Undertale is probably one of the most famous of indie RPGs that follows the style of JRPG. I didn't play Undertale until 2020 and honestly, I love the game. I can't complain about anything the game had to offer. The characters were memorable, the two different story paths added replay value, the music is absolutely fantastic. Seriously, Megalovania is a bop, even if it was inspired by the Live Alive's Megalomania, another game you should totally play. But that's not what we're talking about today. And lastly, the battle system is one of the coolest ideas for an RPG battle system that I've ever experienced. So at first glance, it might seem pretty basic. Enter commands, press a button at the right time to score a critical hit, or where it stands out is you can refuse to attack and just exhaust enemies by dodging their attacks. Avoiding damage is where the uniqueness comes in. When you get attacked, the game takes the form of a bullet hell and you have to avoid all the various attacks. It's super neat and something I hadn't ever experienced before. Though it can get really difficult, I'm mostly thinking of the final boss of the genocide route. Oof. Anyways, I can't wait for Toby Fox's next game, Delta Rune, to be complete. Though, so I think it's been on a hiatus for a while. If it's anything like Undertale though, it's definitely something to look forward to. CrossCode, released in 2018 by Radical Fish Games operating out of Germany. CrossCode honestly surprised me. This indie game seemed like a generic top-down pixel art action game, but it was surprisingly solid. The game was not only a twin-stick action game, but it had a heavy focus on puzzles. This is another game that I would suggest to anyone who loves action games, but also misses the inclusion of puzzles in today's JRPGs, especially considering the puzzles can get relatively difficult and really make you think. Most of the puzzles are based on ricocheting your shots around corners to hit targets to unlock doors. It sounds simple, but honestly, it was a nice break from the constant action. This was one of the few games that made me realize that pixel RPGs were really starting to come into their own, and weren't games just meant to look retro for the sake of triggering your nostalgia to make a sale or two. Sure, the game looks retro, but when playing it, it didn't really feel retro. It felt like a modern game with just a different graphical style. Sure, the pixels do invoke that feeling that you had while playing games in the 90s. Pixel art does that to you, but that art style, oh, it looks so gorgeous. The colors are so bright and inviting. Then that soundtrack, I don't know how they did it, but it sounds almost current and 90s at the same time. Please, if you can, give CrossCode a chance. I guarantee you'll fall in love with everything about it. 
Either that, or you'll get frustrated with the puzzles and just shut it off. Really? It's just a 50-50 chance. Sea of Stars, released in 2023 for multiple consoles by Sabotage Studio, operating out of Canada. Did I mention this game solely because it's a Canadian indie JRPG, and I am also from Canada? Maybe a little bit. But seriously, Sea of Stars was such a fantastic game. It started out as a Kickstarter way back in March of 2020, and it hit its target in only 7 hours. This is probably one of the most hyped indie JRPGs in recent years. Well, I personally did not back it. I did buy it at launch, and I loved it from beginning to end. The whole aspect of a Chrono Trigger style battle system with those dual and triple techs, alongside a Super Mario RPG style timed button press mechanic, just made me fall in love with it immediately. It was one of those games you just can't put down because it keeps getting more and more interesting at every plot point. And even on top of that, what makes it even better is due to the stretch goals it hit, it actually got Yasunori Mitsuda to compose some music as a guest composer. For those that aren't familiar with Yasunori Mitsuda, this is the same composer that worked on games like Chrono Trigger, Xenogears, Mega Man Legends 2, and Soma Bringer. Sure, the game isn't perfect. My main gripes with it were the battle system peaked way too early and became stale as each character only gets 4 moves. Sea of Stars is another game that you just need to play as it's geared towards those that loved Super Nintendo RPGs and grew up with them. Sure, it might be considered nostalgia bait, but that really isn't always a bad thing. Battle Chasers Night War, released in 2018 by Airship Syndicate, operating out of Austin, Texas. This is probably the most western looking JRPG on this list, but that being said, the aesthetic that Battle Chasers has is honestly very beautiful. It's not so much anime styled as it is comic styled. Not generally a style of game that it would naturally be all about, but this game pulls it off and it feels awesome. It's not much of a surprise, but at this point, art style is a very important aspect of video games for me. So naturally, I'm going to bring it up. Anyways, moving on. The game is a turn-based RPG, and it doesn't do anything super spectacular as far as combat is concerned, but it does have a few gimmicks that set it apart. First of all, every regular action will build an additional mana, known as overcharge. With this overcharge, if you use a special move, it can buff that special move, such as more damage or maybe you'll heal more HP. It's not really all that deep, but it's still fun for someone who loves turn-based combat systems. Battle Chasers Night War might be pushing the whole JRPG-style game developed outside of Japan, but since the gameplay feels like a classic turn-based RPG, even if the characters and NPCs feel like a stereotypical Dungeon and Dragons character, this is another game that seemed to go relatively unknown but is worth a playthrough. This is a great cross between Japanese RPGs and Western RPGs, which is really saying something because I've yet to find a Western RPG I enjoy. So if you get a chance, please try Battle Chasers Night War. It's usually really cheap, so you really have no excuse. Bug Fables, The Everlasting Sapling, released in 2019 by Moonsprout Games, operating out of Panama. Okay, so I'm going to be 100% honest, when I first played this game, I noticed a lot of Paper Mario similarities. Action commands, thin paper style art style, medals being effectively the same as badges, almost as if it was a low effort clone. But as I played it, I realized this is far from true. I realized how charming this game was. Firstly, that art style is super adorable, and all the bug jokes and silliness as you progress through the plot makes you realize that this game really isn't all that serious. While playing this, I forgot it was an indie title. It has that feeling of polish that you don't often get with indie games. In fact, I felt like I was playing a Nintendo first party game, and while that might sound strange, it is honestly a very high point of praise. I honestly can't think of any criticisms of this game. I love the characters, the combat system, presentation, and the incredible amount of content. I think the best part about the whole thing is despite traveling through tons of different types of environments, jungles, forests, beaches, deserts, it gets revealed later on in the game that this entire game takes place in someone's backyard. Bug Fables is just one of those games that is a hidden gem and really is just a joy to play. It's also super cheap. I see it commonly for only $5-10 and it's totally worth that amount. 
If you love Paper Mario and love that gameplay style, you should give Bug Fables a shot. So there you have it, five JRPGs that were not developed in Japan. I know calling a non-Japanese game a JRPG might seem kind of odd, but keep in mind, as far as I'm concerned, a JRPG is a style of game and the feeling you get when playing that game, not necessarily the country of origin. Can you think of any games I missed that feel like JRPGs despite being developed outside of Japan? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video and want more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. This has been Shinky, thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro Force.